Hey, my name is Steve Johnson. I'm from Buffalo, New York, and I just want to share some thoughts with you on Matthew chapter 6. And we see in this uh, chapter, it's a continuation of the Sermon on the Mount, and Jesus had just been kind of in chapter 5 talking about how um, people have these ideas, and they've been living in a way where um, they, they've been doing kind of what the law has told them to do, or they've been trying to follow these things, and yet at the same time, they're kind of missing the heart of it, and they're missing the purpose behind it, and, and what it really means to love God and love others. And so here comes this sermon. We get to chapter 6, and we get to an interesting part where Jesus talks about how people live in their religious life and religious practices. And I just want to stop just to say, as I read this, it reminded me of something. When I was a kid, uh, and it's been a long time since I've watched the show, but when I was a kid, I really liked the Simpsons. And I've forgotten more episodes than I remember, but I do remember one pretty well. And in this one episode that I remember, Homer needed to get Marge a gift. I don't know if it was Christmas or her birthday, but he needed to get her a gift. And uh, at the same time that he had no idea what to buy Marge, he really wanted a new bowling ball. And uh, of course, Homer Simpson is a bowler um, because it doesn't require much physical activity, whatever. Um, so, sure enough, when it comes time for Marge to open up her gift, he hands her the gift. It's a spherical gift wrapped in paper, right? You know where this is going. She pulls it open, like, you know, breaks it open, unwraps it, and sure enough, it's a bowling ball. It's not just a bowling ball. And, and by the way, Marge is not a bowler, has no interest in bowling. Uh, he, she opens it up. Not only is it a bowling ball, it has Homer's name engraved on it, right? Like it's a typical Homer Simpson bonehead move. And I thought of that because when we look at chapter 6 in Matthew, what we see is that Jesus kind of peels back um, the veneer of our religious life and action and reveals what's underneath. And so he starts uh, critiquing it, and he's, I think... Speaking of the, a lot of maybe what happens in, in this, the religious establishment that he saw at the time. He starts off talking about fasting. When you fast, make sure that you're not doing it in such a way that it's like that everybody sees that you're fasting. Um, when, you're pr when you pray, don't use all these eloquent words and go on and on. And don't pray in the streets where everybody can hear you and, and so that everybody has your attention. But go somewhere quiet where only God can hear you. And what he's doing is he's revealing something that really lives deep down in all of us. And that thing is this, that you and I need to find meaning and purpose in something, specifically something outside of ourselves. It's just how we're wired. You and I are wired to, to find meaning and value outside of ourselves. And whatever that thing is that we put our hope in or our, our meaning and our esteem in, that thing we will begin in some ways to worship. And that thing we will begin to serve. We will begin giving our time and energy, attention to reinforce whatever that is. Now here's the thing, that could be a lot of different things. It could be nationalism or, or patriotic pride. We, we could put our meaning and ourself into all of that. It could be a political party. It could be a corporation or it could be a business or, or what, who we, are employed by and, and maybe a mission that in, in that in our work and career that we we really identify with and so we put our meaning into that thing and the only problem with that is this that whatever we do that with whatever we kind of put our value and in, in our esteem everything we put our hope in it's not just going to sit by idly it's going to ask for more and it's going to ask for more in the Bible we call this thing an idol an idol is anything that offers to, uh, to cover up or mend our brokenness and the frailty that is our humanity. And it makes these promises, but it can never fulfill them. And so we put our hope or we put our, our value and meaning in these things, and we end up serving them. And that's why I think that this through line of this chapter really is when Jesus is talking about not being able to have two masters. He's talking about money, but it applies to everything. He says, you can't have two masters. He's saying, you can't, you can't put your meaning or the value or hope uh, of your life 
into two different things. It just is impossible. And whatever it is that you put that into determines what kind of life you have. He's, he's saying, listen, the, the things that we put our, our hope in have the ability to either free us and liberate us and give us life or crush us and kill us. And all of these systems that we have in our world, all of these different things, and it could be good things. Even in this case, actually in the beginning, Jesus is really talking about religion. He's talking about religious practice. And yet at the same time, he's saying, listen, when you do these things, if in your heart of hearts, it's really about what other people see. If, I mean, again, Jesus is in a, in living in a time where everybody's religious. The culture says, if you're going to be a good person and successful and whole, you are a person who's practicing Judaism. You're practicing your religion. And so everybody's doing it. But Jesus says this, listen, if you're doing these things and it's more about the esteem that you receive from other people, if it's, if it's more about being respected and people saying, wow, look at him, he is so devoted. If that's where you're getting your sense of value and worth, you're, you can't expect God to honor that. Because at the heart of it all, you're receiving your reward. You're getting what you want, the esteem of people. But here's the bad news. Those people and you are going to die. And, the, and the, the, the careers that we have, the businesses that are in, or, or the missions or, or the causes that we're so engaged in, we can give every ounce of energy we have. And guess what? As much as we would like to think that, that it will go on and on, it just simply won't. I have a lot of, I know a lot of people who, they, they worked in, in a, uh, I know a guy specifically, he worked in a bank, a, a very large bank, very high up in the company, traveled the world, was involved in international business deals, uh, and, and just gave his all, was, seemed to be like a real key to the success of this large international bank. And three years before retirement, after this guy made sacrifices and was away from his family and took all of these trips, did all of these things, really put everything he had into this thing three years before retirement, they gave him the boot. Not because of financial hard times, they were doing great. And here's a guy who's put all of his value as a human, saying this is what it means to be a man, to be a hardworking person who moves up the ladder in this company and, and makes the deals happen and, and all this stuff. And all of that identity wrapped in that and it's just wiped away. And Jesus is trying to warn us here. He's trying to tell us that when it comes to our religious life, let's be clear about who it is that we're serving. I think this is a, a real message to anybody who lives in kind of like an area where you like, it's kind of like the Bible Belt, you would say in America, places where, where more people, it seemed like, go to church or at least support the Christian worldview um, than don't. Because the problem is it's very easy to do these things. So everybody says, oh, he's such a good guy. Yeah, he's a Christian. He, he goes to church. And we can do all of these things and not have any real intimacy with the Father. And so Jesus, I think, is giving us a warning. And, and at the same time, he's painting a picture that's, that's amazing and more beautiful than, than I think what they imagined could be possible at the time, right? They're so used to traveling and walking to the temple and their experience of God being mediated through priests and sacrifices. And here's Jesus saying, listen, if you're devoted and doing it for the right reasons, like when you fast and you're doing it because you're really pursuing God and his work and action in your life, listen, God sees your fasting. And listen, you don't have to talk and use all these words because if, you're real, if your heart is in the right place, you can go to a quiet place in a corner, people don't have to hear you, and you don't have to use lots of words, you can keep it simple and to the point and know that your Father in heaven is close and he hears your voice, like, and he hears your prayer. And, and listen, you can give to people, and you can have a choice. You know what? You can do it in a way that everybody knows, and everybody gives you all the praise. Or you can do it quietly, and you can allow God's heart to be warmed by your generosity. You see, you can worry about the future. You can worry about money and try to make things happen. Or, or you can take these things to God and trust that he's a God who provides. That's the warning Jesus is giving. He's giving a warning, but he's also giving hope that you and I can know this God who is close 
and, and that we can have him as our master. And he, he alone is the one who gives life. And he's the one that rewards. And that reward doesn't go away. But it lives on forever with him. Go in his grace and peace.